I've been seeing this claim on the uh, moon bat left and uh, to some degree in the paleo right as well that um, all of our troubles in foreign policy are because we've been meddling in other countries' affairs for so long. And then they'll go on this big laundry list about, uh, you know, Pinochet and Allende in Chile, uh, the guy before the Shah in Iran, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, let's see here, Operation Condor, and they'll point to Iraq and uh, you know, with Saddam, and then Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan, and say how those things ended up biting us in the butt in the end. And they'll say that uh, this is you know, foreign meddling, and we shouldn't be doing it. Well, I'm here to say that uh, it is foreign meddling, and it's good. Uh, and anyone who studied physics will understand why it's good. And the answer has to do with chaos theory. Uh, any complex system is going to naturally, uh, you know, after a while, start inter all the parts start interacting in increasingly unpredictable ways, and uh, the whole system becomes nonlinear, and there's no way to control the outcome. And now, when you have a whole bunch of states, the whole little bunch of political factions doing this, naturally what happens is it becomes a very nonlinear system very fast. And this is just because it's a complex system. You know, anyone who has a very basic understanding of chaos theory can understand this. So now, in order to prevent it from you know, having all hell break loose, you have to constantly keep tweaking the uh, additional parameters you set into the system to you know, sort of keep the chaotic system somewhat tamed you know, mathematically tamed like that. So, uh, of course, meddling is good, because you know, unless you want all hell to break loose. Now, the, uh, the liberal internationalists and the isolationists don't get this. The uh, liberal internationalists seem to, you know, somehow understand, uh, to, uh, get this ridiculous idea that uh, international consensus should just drive everything, and, you know, that's equally as complex. It, you know, the, the UN, you look how that goes, the... Uh, all the rogue states, literally, this is not even a joke, all the rogue states defined by the CIA as rogue states are the ones running the UN Human Rights Commission and none of the other ones, Sudan, Cuba, North Korea, it's a big joke. And then, you know, America is constantly the one that's being singled out and told to be, you know, they can't be on the Human Rights Commission. And then, of course, um, we have the isolationists who argue that this shouldn't be necessary because we shouldn't be in international politics in the first place, we should just retreat. Well, this is this is kind of ridiculous for a different reason, and that is, we kind of have to just by our size. I mean, we're bigger than Rome, even we're kind of like the the new version of Atlantis almost. We can't be this big and simply, you know, stay outside the international scene. It just doesn't work. And so now, fortunately, there are a couple of you know, viewpoints that do understand we need to meddle, and that it's you know just a, a fact of international foreign policy. But so that's a redundancy. <laughs> uh, it is the realists and the uh, neoconservatives. So whenever you uh, go and you know, vote and think about foreign policy, always make sure you try and vote for a realist or a neocon, because they're the only ones that really understand how to properly maintain foreign policy. Everyone else is, they don't, they don't get it. it, it foreign policy requires meddling.